Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew Callsign, AC3DS. I'm glad you're here for this episode talking about battery charging. Um, if you're not familiar with the full depths of you know, profiles related to charging different chemistry types, well then we're in the same boat together. Uh, I have been doing some research into this to, to get a little bit of a better understanding, but it, there's definitely still some mystery there for me. But what I do know is this, I have been using both a sealed lead acid battery and a, a lithium iron phosphate battery for my mobile transmissions and both work perfectly fine. The charging of them is different. Um, the sealed lead acid battery uses a very traditional sealed lead acid battery charger. In my case, I'm using a NOCO Genius G750, which I don't, I'm not sure that you can actually buy this anymore. Uh, I think it's out of production. I think the G1 might be the, the, the smallest that you can get. Um, and for me, this takes about 10 hours or so to charge, which is fine. I generally only use it once uh, in the course of, a, a, of, a, of an event, and then I'm just charging it up for the next day or you know, another day later. Um, so that works fine. It's been a, a, a true workhorse and um, very, very happy with it. Very simple to use. Can't really go wrong with the sealed lead acid. Biggest you know, downfall, of course, is its weight. It's, it's big and it's heavy. Uh, about 17 pounds for this battery. Whereas the lithium iron phosphate battery is really light, about two pounds, and uh, the charging of it though is, is a little bit different. So I have this IMAX B6 balanced charger here, and I originally purchased this balanced charger for the purpose of uh, charging RC batteries. And these batteries have you know a different kind of connection here that allows you to maintain a more fixed, uh, more precise charging profile. Chemistry is different than just a standard uh, lithium polymer battery, right? A LiPo battery. And so you wanna make sure that the charger that you have is appropriate for charging a LiPo battery. Charging a rechargeable battery involves three different stages, maybe even four. The first stage being a, the application of a constant current the second stage being the application of a constant voltage, and the third and fourth stage is maybe being a float charge or an end charge. Um, and it's really important that you're using the correct profile for how these different stages are being conducted because they, each type of battery with a different chemistry requires a different amount of current, a different amount of voltage for a different amount of time in a different manner. Uh, you know, one might have a linear progression, one might have a more logarithmic progression, uh, you know, different amounts of time for each one. So it's really important that you're using the correct profile for the correct battery type. So for, for me, I, I've used this B6 charger and it has done its job flawlessly. Um, there are a lot of other LifePo chargers out there and I mean, just do your due diligence and find the one that you feel most comfortable with. Uh, this was about $40, and I know that most are somewhere in that $20 to $60 range, so a fairly standard price point. The time that it takes to charge this battery from pretty much full depletion is about four, three to four hours, somewhere in that range. This is a 16 amp uh, hour battery, um, and it does a, you know, it does a great job, but um, it doesn't take particularly long to charge up, which is really nice because if you're trying to do multiple runs in a day and you have multiple batteries but you have the capability of charging it between uh, sessions, then you, know, you can charge this one up over the course of several hours and then put it back into production and into usage. So definitely a workable solution um, if you're trying to shuffle batteries in and out. Um, so I guess what I would like to do now is just show you a little bit about how I go about charging it using this particular charger. So let's dive right in. On the IMAX B6, go to the user set program menu screen and choose enter. Then you're going to have to change the voltage down to 3.3 for the nominal voltage. So that way the charger knows that it's looking for a lithium iron phosphate battery as opposed to a lithium polymer. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to go back to the program select and you're going to see that it's now uh, has the lithium iron phosphate option and 
now you are given two choices. One is you could set the uh, current directly, or you and you can also, as I'm doing here, choosing uh, a particular voltage or a number of cells. Um, I'm going to leave this on auto, and I'm also going to leave it set to one amp. Then I'm going to hold for a long press and it will begin to charge the battery. And notice that it has correctly identified it as a four cell lithium iron phosphate battery and it is applying the correct profile. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, maybe you've done some research on profiles for battery charging and you'd like to share that with the community, please do so by leaving a comment down below. Uh, we definitely like to see those comments and I know that others read them as well and we try to respond to as many as we possibly can so please feel free to, to leave your thoughts down below. Of course if you found this video helpful uh, give us a thumbs up, like it, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Until then!